Welcome to this tutorial um, regarding the creation of stress analysis test to Inventor. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a simple seat uh, with two sides and a series of lets. Uh, I'm going to create a, a standard stress analysis test and then modify the piece of furniture just so we can see the differences, the variances and results between the two. Um, we're also going to create this uh, bench as a parameter driven item and therefore uh, allow the user to in future be able to parametrically change different aspects of their furniture or application and then test under different circumstances uh, different loads and different constraints so I'm just applying the parametrics here now and I can save the various different um, parts of this um, in different files and later create an assembly as was carried out in previous tutorials So at the moment I'm saving the back leg of the seat and I use this back leg actually to make up the front leg also. So now that it's saved as the back leg, I can now save it as the front leg. Now I have a separate file made, I can edit the extrusion, change the height of the extrusion to so the front leg. and just click save then again I'm going to create another new standard part now just for the the rail from the front leg to the back leg so I just have to apply the parameters from the excel sheet and I'll dimension the rail accordingly It will be now possible to create an assembly of the three parts together and also create a second frame for the other side and then later modify these if required. So I just extrude now this cross rail and now save this part. I'm just going to skip here now a small bit now as well because we've actually created parts and assemblies previously so we know the proper way to constrain different items. So I'm going to go to the environments tab here now and click on stress analysis in the top left hand corner and when this is clicked it gives the options to create a simulation and that's exactly what I'm going to do now. And as soon as this is clicked it gives um, a dialog box that opens up and it gives the option of different types of um, stress analysis. Uh, the one we're going to be particularly interested in is static analysis, just applying a basic weight to the um, item of furniture itself and see how it acts under different stresses, strains, different loads, and if the materials are of a different specification, how also that will affect the outcome. You got the choice of a single point or a parametric um, objective of the entire stress analysis. Um, and here you just have a different design view and the level of detail, just some little details there that this will be more towards um, very exact uh, stress analysis um, di using different components and materials. So we're just going to go first of all for the basic um, type of stress analysis. Down here you've got a default type of joint, so you've bondage, separation, sliding, uh, shrink fit, uh, just different types, uh, even including the spring that we detailed in previous tutorials. We're just going to stay with the bondage type of um, joint for this stage. Click OK. And as soon as this is clicked now, you'll see in the left hand side you have in the left pane window you have assembly, material constraints, loads, context, mesh, and results. Now these are just here as a guideline, so basically you can follow them either top to bottom here or across from left to right on the top. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to assign materials. Now since we have our parts um, made previously before we brought them to assembly they're a default material because we didn't change it and the override material for this instance 
um, it's as defined so it's still basically as default and we must select the material now at this stage in order for the stress analysis to work correctly just when I've selected all these just since there's so many parts in it um, it can be possible to go ahead and input all these materials and inventory can calculate then the safety factor etc or the yield strength of the different materials under different circumstances and with the various specifications involved. The next thing here we're going to do is we're going to click a fixed constraint. Now you have the option of pin or frictionless for different uh, variation stress analysis. Basically um, this seat is if you want to think about it sitting in mid-air and if we're going to apply a load to it it won't react correctly and it's somehow the legs are actually held in position. So the fixed constraint it's basically just going to, like it's going to be sitting on the ground. So if we look from the bottom up, we can click the bottom of the four legs. And this will hold the seat in a rigid position and allow the test to be carried out. And as soon as you select all the constraints, just uh, click OK. The next thing we have to do here now is we have to be able to apply a force to the actual seat. So we have to be able to select where we want to apply our force and what force we want to apply. So here you see we're going to select different components and then we're going to select a value as well. Now in this case it's also possible to use vector components. So we're going to work in the z-axis up and down and we can input newtons. In this particular instance uh, that 2500 would actually point up so we're just going to put minus 2500 so it will point down. We can click on force again and also apply some pressure to the back. We're just using this for the um, specifics of uh, visualization of how you carry out this. So we're just going to input um, 500 there. Up here you have either manual um, or automatic contacts. Uh, if the manual is clicked first, it says you have to actually automatically apply the contacts first before you can modify them. So we're just going to click automatic on top. It's going to generate the contacts and it's going to realize all the constraints that are in place on the assembly. To the right here is a mesh view and when this is clicked it actually computes the mesh of the specific item of furniture. The denser the mesh in the actual build assembly the more um, accurate the results be produced. This is particularly um, important where you're using curved components and especially around edges and corners where you might have to have a denser mesh to receive more accurate results. So that's computing the mesh now at the moment. And that's the actual mesh of this um, seat assembly. And as you can see, the uh, thicker, denser sections have a tighter mesh than the longer, elongated, narrow sections. You also have different um, loads that you can apply. Now we, we've applied basically a basic force. Um, there's also a bearing load. moment load, body load, gravity, or a more force. And all these can lead to different parameters being applied to the specific item of furniture. Uh, the moment force that was detailed a minute ago actually represents the turning action. So if you were had a support on one side, for example, if it was uh, supported to a wall, maybe perhaps a seat support to a wall, you could simulate something actually sitting on the seat and trying to create a turning effect on it. You can also apply gravity as well. But for this in particular instance, I'm just going to go to simple uh, demonstration. There's the mesh, mesh settings, more mesh settings, and convergence settings. They all relate to the preparation of the assembly uh, for the actual simulation. And you can, in the mesh, mesh view that we noticed a minute ago, you can actually go into the mesh settings and you can make the mesh more dense or less dense as the need requires. So the next thing we're going to do here is just click simulate and just click run and the drop down box here just give any warnings in case you have any, any constraints properly defined etc in the entire assembly
Now you can see at the moment the actual deflection that's taken place. Uh, what's actually detailed here is the von Mises stress. Um, simple research in this area can actually um, show the different safety factors um, that are acceptable for Mises stress under different materials. Now unfortunately at the moment I have not defined any wood material. However, I believe it is possible to actually change um, the properties of steel, for example, into the properties of perhaps white deal. Save that again, and then actually bring this into the assembly. This could be very useful now in the furniture industry, where you could actually test products um, to see their worthiness and to make sure that they're that they're safe um, when they're in use. Um, it also cuts down on the time taken to prepare actual life-size models and test in various um, lab testing equipment such as the Instagram machine and also cut down on, on other costs associated so I believe this is a very useful tool in Inventor. We can just turn this model around here now just so we can see different sides of it. Uh, this scale drop down menu here now actually allows you to uh, just scale the aspect or deformation that has taken place uh, just to really highlight if there was a very small uh, deflection that this will actually highlight um, that to a greater need that would be required by the operator. If the report is actually clicked on here, you can get the option of going for a complete or custom report on the actual results. So you have different boxing checked there for different parameters. But just want to go for the general template. So as soon as it's clicked, um, Inventor carries out a stress analysis report on every aspect of the piece of furniture and also different kinds of stresses, X, Y, X, Z, uh, Y, Y, etc. The Varmesis stress, uh, deflections, etc. That would show any warnings um, in the actual stress analysis report itself, and so far it's okay. Now that the stress analysis report is actually uh, completed, it opens up a web page where you can actually view, view different aspects of the results. So you have the simulation itself, general results, uh, the materials that are used, part names, um, the operating conditions, the phases selected, the forces, and uh, the different types of results that are actually obtained as well by Inventor. So here's a result summary of the actual uh, min minimum and maximum um, deflection of the component, first principle of stress, the displacement itself, the safety factors involved with the materials that have been used, and then the stress that occurred in different uh, axes as well. This is actually going through the strains now of the different axes. moment I will just minimize this here now at the moment. The occasion could arise now that this particular point we'd find that this um, particular component is not strong enough for the task at hand. We might want to add a middle section such as the end section here once again to try and strengthen the component. I just flick down ahead here now a small bit and a middle section has been added. We can go to the environments and create another stress analysis. And because we're working off the same assembly, just an updated version, it will bring in the various um, constraints that were defined in the last stress analysis. 
so the context, the results, the constraints of all the previous ones are immediately available. At this point we've only the four fixed constraints on the four very outside legs. So if we just uh, run that simulation um, for a moment, you'll actually see that the middle two legs also need to be constrained in the proper fashion. Um, if this is not done, as shown in this case, it will not give the proper results. In this case now, it's been shown that the uh, centre legs here at the moment, they've actually deflected out to one side. Uh, the four outside legs have stayed um, perfectly as they were. Uh, this is because we haven't actually con applied the constraints to the bottom of the legs. So we're just going to finish the stress analysis and we're actually going to update that. So we can go to stress analysis. We can go to our constraints. We can edit the constraints and add two more constraints now to the center two legs. Now the base of all the legs are constrained and we can finally run the simulation again. We can view any warnings. At the moment everything's okay. You can see now we have three forces down and three forces back. We could also pick um, one section if the need required. Um, suppose there was a different uh, lat of a different specification being used in the furniture. We could uh, select this um, item on its own. Now you can see that the deflection on the far side of the piece of furniture is greater than the near side. That's because I've purposely put the centre section just a little bit more to the right hand side just to demonstrate um, how these different spacing can affect the furniture itself. We can actually go into an animation mode here now as well and we can show a slow steps of 30 steps and actually how the actual piece of furniture deforms. Now you can see the left hand side is deforming more than the right hand side due to the spacing of the centre legs. You can also see the different colour changes uh, with the Von Mises stress chart on the left hand side um, and different steps of the actual simulation.